Welcome back to Interbike TV. I'm David, I'm your host, and thanks for joining us at interbike.com slash live. I am really pleased right now to be joined with the gentleman from the National Interscholastic Cycling Association. We have Rick and Austin. Gentlemen, welcome to Good Morning Interbike. Good morning, Thank David. You. It's great to have you here. <laughs> yep, good I'm to be here. I'm going to ignore you for a second. I'm going to talk to Rick. Rick, tell me a little bit about, just in general, your history with bikes, because I think that it's something that will uh, really lead into what you're doing with the NICA. All right, uh, uh, David, I, 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 was, I had polio. Uh, got it in 1953. One year later, they came out with the vaccination. Uh, it left me with a, uh, I don't know if your camera can pick up the brace and whatnot, but my left leg is extremely uh, uh, compromised because of that. Yeah. I couldn't, it's hard for me to walk. At a very young age, I was ex introduced to the bicycle and uh, instantly I was able to keep up with the neighborhood kids. Uh, it was my legs, my version of the wheelchair. Uh, and I never look back. I ride a bike every day. Uh, I'm very passionate about and have a very personal relationship with the bicycle. For me, it offered me a way to just to keep up with the kids in the neighborhood. It extended my, uh, just like most kids, it also expanded my range. Uh, and I ride a bike every day to this day. And I think that that dovetails nicely into what you're still doing today <laughs> with the National Interscholastic Cycling Association. Austin, tell us a little bit about what the NICA is. Well, NICA, as we refer to it, is uh, really a national... That's easier, by the way. Yeah, okay, NICA. So just Jeff from now on. <laughs> um, NICA is a national movement to create high school cycling programs, just like, you know, football, baseball, and to really make it part of the high school experience for student athletes at that age. And it's really a junior development program. Sure. I mean, we're using the bicycle to uh, grow uh, adults that understand their, their role uh, in the environment and the way um, that bicycling can be part of their life. Yeah. Much like Rick said, you know, it's, it's building strong character, uh, minds, uh, and, and development. Uh, and, 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 and Rick, you know, in the traditional <coughs> high school sports world, right, you've got the football players and then everybody else. And not everybody right. fits into that role, right, do they? Right. And so I think NICA can really help fill a, a need, a vacuum mm -hmm. for that's some right. students, right? That's right, that's very true. We, we built NICA from a, as a youth, we are a youth development organization using high school mountain biking as a tool to build yeah. strong mind, strong body, strong character, and we're going to do that in the most equal and inclusive way. Uh, every decision we make is based on supporting those core values. For example, any kid who crosses the finish line gets points. Nice. All right? The team score is a combination of the girl points and boy points. You have to have girls on your team if you're going to be competitive. It's an actual co-ed sport. So it is. Yeah. And yeah. because of those rules and that, that, that philosophy, we've created a sport that's welcoming for the brand new kid who's, n who's never looked at themselves as an athlete, as well as the gifted, very kid who's been riding a bike with their parents since sure. they were born. Sure. So, and they both are on the team together. And everybody's cheering everybody on. So. Austin, how long has the uh, NICA been around? Well, that's a good question. Uh, the NorCal High School League, which was really where it started, uh, was about 12 years ago uh, when the, the first team at Berkeley High started up. Um, and that went on for a decade. And uh, it was really about four years ago that Matt Fritzinger, the founder of the NorCal League, uh, and I were talking about you know, how great this is in California and the thought of we need to help other states. Um, have what we have in, in NorCal. And so that idea started getting tossed around. Um, we started looking for opportunities to, to fund that, to make it happen. And uh, the Easton Sports Foundation really stepped up in a big way and enabled us to launch the SoCal League. And uh, from that, then we created NICA um, just a little over two years ago, um, going through the paperwork to make that the, the, the national uh, organization. And so we've been, as a national group, about uh, two and a half years in existence, and it's been a roller coaster ride in those two years. I mean, as we'll <laughs> talk a little bit more about where we went from having one state right. to now 10. So uh, what states are you in at the moment? Um, so SoCal and NorCal, we split California. Two states. Um, Colorado. Yeah. You know, so I used to live in California, maybe it's <laughs> Yeah, two be. states, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Colorado, Washington, Utah, Texas, Minnesota, and our three, and, and Tennessee, Arizona, 
Um, New York. And New York. And those are your three newest, right? Those yes. are the three yeah. newest. And that's, yesterday. I mean, the, I was going to say, I just got that press release yeah. on the email. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's awesome. How is it being received? I mean, clearly you've grown a lot in two years. What's the, what, what kind of challenges do you see when you <laughs> go to states? Yeah, <laughs> I know, how much time do we have, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, when you go to different states and different cities and, and different districts, what kind of challenges do you see? Well, you mean, I mean challenges in, in building a new league yeah. or, you know, our biggest challenge is our growth. Mm. Uh, we have so, we, the, the, the demand for our program at this point is greater than we can fulfill. Wow. Uh, we have a bid, pro because of that, we have a bid process that we, every spring, we receive bids from areas around the country wanting to be a part of NICA. Uh, we look at the ones that we feel are the strongest and we select those uh, and then work with those. Um, we work. We look for four individuals come to us. We, we can't just be one person. We need a little team of four coming from that area, uh, and we sit down and we talk. We work with them for over a number of months. Then we make the decision that we they they become what's called a project league, um, where, and that during that stage of a project league, there's a lot of guidance uh, from the national office, as well as what we've done is. As Austin said, we're creating high school mountain biking is just as standard as football, baseball, and right. basketball. So the same rules throughout the country. Yeah. All right. So a a race director in Texas can go to Utah and be a race director in in Utah. Yeah, all makes right. Sense. And, and yeah, we switch all the different jobs. You know, around. and I yeah. think to get to your question, Dave, um, is my experience as a head coach of a, a high school team for yeah. five years. Um, and now I teach in the coaching conferences, what we call leader summits to train coaches, and I've, I've taught in every one of our state leagues. The thing that I've noticed going from state to state um, is the challenge of finding people who are willing to spend time as a coach. Our, our program only succeeds if we have committed adults who want to be coaches. These coaches are not being paid yeah. by their school like the football coach might be, um, so we're looking for people who really are passionate about cycling, um, have the patience to work with younger uh, students who might be totally new to cycling. Uh, and so we're constrained by the number of coaches right now. Sure. Kids are riding, but they need, they need the mentor at their school to, to provide that leadership. And right now we have about 750 coaches that have gone through our licensing program. That's a huge number. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But we'd like to double that. Okay. Every, we want every school to have a team. What and is so the vision? Where, where would you like to be in the next X number of years? Our goal by 2020 is to be coast to coast. Nice. All right? And we've, we've jumped, tech, you know, technically we could say we've already reached that, you know, right. knowing that we got. But you want to be in 50 states. We want to be in 50 states. We want every uh, high school student in America to have the opportunity to join a high school mountain bike team at some point. What does that mean for a student? And, and what I mean by that is, uh, again, not everybody is the football player or the cheerleader or the track and field star or the wrestler. What does it mean to a high school student to be able to pick up a mountain bike and join mm -hmm. a team? Well, I can weigh in a little bit on that. I mean, uh, having personally coached, I don't know, in the Berkeley experience over five years, I've probably had 150 riders um, participate either for one year or two or even four years. Yeah. And for them, it's, um, it's about being part of an organization at the school. It's somewhere where their peers understand what it is they're doing and support them in a co-ed environment and getting outside the school. We don't run around the track, we go out to local parks. Right. And it gives the rider an appreciation and a better understanding of the, the area that they live in. And it gives them the power, much like Rick explained, the bike becomes a tool for them to get around town. They're no longer relying on mom or dad or the bus. They have a sense of freedom under their own power. And so I've taken kids who've never been to the local park in their whole life. Wow. And then they get there and they get on top of the hill and they look back over to the San Francisco Bay and they, you can see them almost like sort of stand up and like, I did this. That's great. It's so empowering. And that's what keeps me back because I've seen it firsthand how this experience has, has changed kids and given them direction. So yesterday, sitting right where you are, I had professional cyclist Tom Danielson, okay? yeah, Garmin yeah. Sharp team, right? Wins the stage in the yeah. USA Pro Challenge this year, top 10 in the Tour de France last yeah. year. No slouch of a kid, right? Yeah. And the story he told is very similar to what you just said. He didn't fit into the traditional sports role right. in, in high school. He won 
I think it was a mountain bike race. Yeah. And as a result of that, look where he is today. You know, right, sharp right. guy. Yeah. He's he's um, he's he's put together a scholarship program at his college, that's now funding four full mm -hmm. scholarships for students. Some famous names in cycling as a result. I mean, look what cycling did for him when he was in high school. That's, that's huge. Right, that's right. And, and my, uh, you know, I can personally speak from my own daughter's experience at the high school uh, mountain bike team. She joined, was in a big urban school, uh, Berkeley High School. Uh, you start and it's a huge school and it's hard to find your way. And, and whether it's, every kid in high school has got to find a, a group and yeah. attach themselves someplace. Otherwise you're lost. A and positive group. A, a positive group, yeah, that's right. Because you can find the all. Uh, and uh, the experience for her was immense, immensely empowering. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and adding to that, you know, as a coach, um, these kids saw us as adults, so basically the same age as their parents in some yeah. cases, yet we were doing something that they appreciate and really aspire to, and so it, it, it allowed us to, or me as a coach, um, to do that development, to provide a sort of positive role model, ex model experience to kids who might not, you know, at that time really know well, what is the future hold for me. And, right. and then they see someone that's an adult that's riding their bike, that's healthy and doing all the things that they think is fun. And it's like, oh, coach, how did you get to where you are? And nice. you start asking those questions back to what we're really about, which is development. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. trying to help kids find their way in a really confusing world. Here at Interbike, what you're, you're talking to bicycle dealers, you're talking to manufacturers. How do you, how do you partner with the bike industry itself? It, the bike industry has been a, uh, the key uh, element in our success. Uh, we went to the bike industry really early on and said, listen, um, you help us with supporting these kids of four years, they're in high school, and they're going to be a loyal customer for the rest of their life. Good and, point. And, and, yeah. the, and it's true. It and is. the cycling industry got that. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we said, it can't be a exclusive um, sponsorship. It's got to be, a, this is a community of effort we're building here. It's we're building a national movement. It's got to be an all-in effort. And, and they also, and the cycling industry got that. So we have on our sponsorship, we've got competing organizations, and, and we've got those on our board. That's unique in the industry, it's, right? It is unique, <laughs> and we've got those members on our board of directors. And so, uh, but everybody understands that this is a community effort sure. by not just uh, a group of coaches, but parents, coaches, the bike industry, uh, the whole community is involved with this, so. Nice, uh, you know, a, 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 the local high school where I live, just formed their mountain bike team. That's we were right. talking about that earlier. Right. And, and you talk about the community getting involved. I mean, it's in the local paper. People who I know who are not cyclists in the community were talking about it and there was a buzz about it. I mean, they just had the inaugural race and it was busy. Well, let me tell you about it. I was there yeah. in, at Park City, Utah, um, two weekends ago for the first race in Utah and we had 240 student athletes come out to the first race. Nice. And one of the things that was really fascinating about that at the start line of each uh, field and we used, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior varsity, varsity, high school uh, categories. We asked how many of you, this is the first race, first mountain bike race you've ever been at. And I would say around 70% of the kids raised their hand. Wow. And so what does that tell us? We're bringing in huge numbers of kids completely new to the sport and giving them a structure and in a supportive way to learn how to ride safely and, and to experience the, the power of, of being part of a team. It's nice. And so, I mean, fast forward, right now we have 1,700 student athletes in the leagues. We did a little calculation. We've had about 4,000 students participate in all of our uh, programs um, since the beginning. And so I look forward 20 years from now yeah. and w yeah. what are the numbers? Do the math. Um, and we were talking earlier that, that, that the we it becomes like a family weekend. The, yes. the old days of mountain biking, a little yeah. bit like like the yeah. current cyclocross, yeah. it's it's a positive family outdoor weekend event. I mean, does well, it get much better than that? It, well, and, and <laughs> it doesn't, and and, it, it, and they don't stop at the high school experience. My experience is very typical. Uh, we we would make it a family affair if we sure. go out to, for the weekend. Uh, every you know every race we'd be there for the weekend, and um, those experiences yeah. that we had then that we developed, an interesting thing has happened is that when my daughter gets together with her other friends from the Berkeley High mountain bike team, 
she, they, she, they've all graduated five years ago from high school. Yeah. None of them ride at the collegiate level. They all ride bikes. Nice. When they, got, when they get together, when they come back home, they went to, you know what they do? They ride bikes. <laughs> this last January, uh, they approached me for three of the kids uh, from the Berkeley, girls from the Berkeley High team, alumni, came up to me and says, you know, Rick, Dad, we want to go on a bike adventure this Christmas. So the four of us, I got to accompany three of yeah. the alumni from Berkeley High's mountain bike team. We went from, uh, we did a seven day self bike ride, self supported from Santa Cruz to Santa Barbara, nice. going down the California coast. And I felt like the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> you were. Uh, yeah. I, I totally was. You know, I was the envy of every cyclist we uh, came sure. to. And, and those relationships, that, that only happened because of the experiences that there we developed go during that high school year. Let me ask you guys uh, to close it out. We have people who are watching who aren't bike dealers, aren't in the industry, they're just general consumers. How can they get involved in supporting what Nike is doing? Well, first off, you can, um, as all we need, we need, we're short resources constantly. They can go online and make a donation that goes right directly into supporting getting more kids on the bikes, Great. all right? Uh, as, as Austin said, our biggest challenge is coaches. We need adults, we need caring, responsible adults to come forward to act as yeah. coaches. Great. And let me um, add to that, we don't need retired professional cyclists to be coaches. Right. We need people who I said earlier, have the patience to work with kids that this is totally new to them, um, and have the desire to, to get involved in their community. And we've worked with plenty of coaches who have very minimal experience riding a bike, and giving them the skills and the support that they need to become very successful coaches. So I like to tell people, hey, don't worry about the cycling side of it. Are you willing and committed to working with, with some high school aged athletes? If nice. so, we're going to help you and our training program will give you the tools you need to be successful. What's your website? Where can people get more information? We are um, NICA. What's well, National MTB? NationalMTB.org.org. Awesome, the national, nationalmtb.org, go ahead and check it out. Rick, Austin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, David. What you guys thank are you doing David. is the future of this industry, so, and thank of our country. Much. So, I, congratulations, I keep doing what you're doing. Really, you, we really you. appreciate it. We're live fr from Interbike with Good Morning Interbike. We will be back in just a couple of minutes with Mark Graff from Smart Etailing. They've got a new program to tell us about, so stick around.